This video is the making of the vitamin drink, which should help in uh, recovery from injuries, surgeries, and uh, also has helped my mom stave off uh, dementia, which had started, but has uh, now been uh, stabilized and uh, blocked from going any further than it was. So uh, start off with a heavy duty mixer, like a Vitamixer, uh, something that can handle a, a fairly substantial load. And uh, I put the uh, fat soluble supplements in first. And at the end, I'll go through all of the supplements that go into it. But uh, just in general, you have uh, vitamin E. So all these are the fat soluble vitamins and lecithin to help emulsify the fats in the water base in the milk. So we're using whole milk because it has fat in it. So that helps uh, to uh, carry the fat soluble elements of this drink. Uh, the second thing is all the supplements that you would normally take, <clears throat> if you wanna use your own supplement routine, uh, I separate out the capsules from the tablets. The tablets are all gonna get crushed. Now the key on this drink is that with everything going into solution, it ha hits your system faster. And I think uh, just uh, from my experimentation, so as anecdotal evidence, I think you get better absorption of everything. Uh, totally don't believe in these uh, time release things. Uh, those elements, I think, probably end up just going through your system and uh, not really getting into the, your system. So that's called assimilation. Uh, I, I really don't think it does much for assimilation because uh, once things go into your stomach, the acids and the churning of your stomach and the action in the upper end in the large intestines I think uh, just completely negates anything that they think, any benefit that they think they're getting from time release. So anyway, um, yeah, going into the, uh, the drink after the fat soluble elements we have, and you include uh, calcium in the fat soluble elements. So although calcium isn't fat soluble, there is a greater benefit to uh, having the calcium go in with the, some fats. So uh, I'm gonna crush, uh, crush some of these uh, tablets up and show you how I do that. Uh, the best thing is if you have a, uh, if you have something like a, uh, an herb uh, grinder or something like that to make it easier for you, I'm just going to do it the old fashioned way. Take a big spoon and a smaller spoon and uh, put those in there and uh, put some pressure on them and crush them and into the drink. So we had some Boswellia there. That's a, a good healing agent. Now in the fat soluble, uh, a lot of the elements uh, that, that uh, work well with uh, supplements that help your eye health, uh, like uh, zinc, are, uh, are good to put in together, I think. I mean, with a Vitamix, everything's going to get mushed around anyway and completely blended. So getting these uh, tablets all crushed up, a lot of times I break them, it just makes it a little bit easier to uh, crush them. But like I say, if you have an herb grinder, uh, that'll take care of that because uh, it does take a fair amount of finger strength to get these tablets crushed. So it kind of makes you wonder, you know, what's going on down there in your stomach with these uh, doggone tablets because some of them are extremely hard and I have seen um, some reports about how some of these things are so hard they don't even get digested so uh, 
the better the quality of the vitamin supplements that you get, the, the, uh, the better the outcome is going to be on this drink because you're assured of the potency and then it seems to me that most of them are a little bit easier to crush than El Cheapo stuff. And I think that because uh, what they use as a binder to uh, carry the supplement itself is uh, probably a cheaper grade. It may not be, I don't, you know, I haven't done any real background work on it, but uh, may be a cheaper grade and end up with a harder tablet than uh, maybe a higher quality uh, vitamin supplement. So, yeah, key with the uh, elements that go in for eye health is to have uh, plenty of zinc in there too. And elements like the uh, carotenoids are just the uh, yellow, orange, red, green uh, pigmentation in uh, plants. And uh, carotenoids are very essential to uh, good health. And then also with the algaes, for some reason, algae, <laughs> although you can see it in, because of the, uh, the life that's supported by algae in the oceans, is uh, you know remarkable because you look at everything from whales down to the little fish and tiny organisms and everything there in the oceans seems pretty healthy except for whatever damage uh, we've been doing to the oceans as uh, humans that release plenty of toxins and other pollution unfortunately but anyway uh, now I'm putting the capsules in. I break the, or, or just, you don't break them actually, just pull them apart. Uh, most of them aren't really glued together. It doesn't take much to uh, get the capsules apart, but I dig my fingernail along the edge of where the capsules come together and pry back with a fingernail. So that's about it right there. There's the edge of the uh, capsule. So I get my fingernail on there and just pull back, pull both sides and they come apart pretty easily. So we get all these capsules in here. There's a very strong herbal element to this drink because I believe uh, herbs are totally underutilized for people in supplementation and our ancient forefathers very well knew the, the power and capacity of herbs and uh, the Bible tells us that God put everything here that we need for our health and, and recovery from illness so uh, we need to go back and, and look at what the ancients used to recover from illness without having to make all these synthetic products that you know, they make a lot of money for drug companies and pharmaceutical companies and other endeavors such as that. But the herbs are the best way to go. Herbs and minerals. Minerals are extremely essential to good health. So in this drink, we have... Uh, two different kinds of uh, multivitamin supplements. And at the end, I'm gonna show each one of those bottles to you on the video so you see what I'm putting in here. So uh, you'll have a list by video. I was gonna I'll compile a list on the computer as well so that you can see a copy of the list of the supplements. But having a picture helps too, so I'll put that in there. The other thing is uh, I'm very big on spices as well as the herbal supplements. Spice basically another form of an herb, I guess you would say, but I haven't checked the dictionary definitions on that, but I think uh, organically, chemically, that's probably about the size of it. So anyway, uh, 
soon as I get done pulling these vitamin supplements apart here, then uh, you'll see the spice complement. But then the spices give you good flavor too. Now my mom, uh, who has a little bit of dementia, uh, used to run the kitchen at the church, at the Presbyterian church here in town. So her big thing, because she prepared food for hundreds of people at a time, is uh, flavor. And everything has to have nice flavor and uh, refreshing, especially if it's a drink. So uh, the other thing is with the fat soluble, we're gonna put some oil in there. This is flax oil. Uh, normally use an Udo's Choice, which is a, uh, a cold pressed oil produced by a guy in Florida and his name is Udo. So Udo has a combination of flax oil and a number of other different oils. I think, I forget exactly what his combination is, but he, met, he actually makes a couple different uh, oils that are cold pressed, but uh, about as high as quality as he can get. So let's go to the spices. We have a little bit of ground nutmeg. So just a couple of shakes of nutmeg in there. And some of this, all that you may uh, get a little bit of a chuckle out of it, but there's such a wide variety of supplementation. When I got into this in high school, at the end of high school, uh, you would go to a health food store and on the shelves, there would be a pretty good array of different supplements, but it wasn't mind boggling. Today, you go into a, a health food store or a vitamin shop, and it's mind-boggling. It, <laughs> it would take you a year of going through everything they have just to get an idea of the overall selection, let alone uh, trying to figure out the detail of everything that's, that they have as a possibility to purchase for vitamin supplements. Oh, uh, let's see, I forgot the, uh, yeah, use an allspice too, because that has great flavor. And then clove, love the flavor of clove. Very strong, so you don't need a lot of the clove that can really overpower a drink. Or if you want a drink that really tastes like clove, because it does have a pretty appealing flavor, uh, you can go strong on the clove. And then cinnamon, especially for people with diabetes, uh, you want cinnamon in there. So I use uh, plenty of cinnamon again. <clears throat> high on flavor, mom loves flavor, so we get plenty of flavor there. Mom and dad are 94, so <clears throat> they're going strong on the, uh, the heavy duty vitamin, vitamin drink. So now we have the, the milk with the whole milk with the fats, then the uh, oil, <laughs> like a flax oil or any other combination oil that you can get at the health food store. And uh, <clears throat> next, we're gonna get the uh, amino acids separated. So we'll get some aminos. This one's called critical aminos. You get at uh, the vitamin shop. Over the years, I've kind of gravitated to the vitamin shop as a source for the vitamin supplements. So, and your quantity, you just base it on however many people are going to be uh, having the drink. This uh, combination that I'm doing now will basically take care of the supplementation for uh, four people in the family. So, uh, my brother's here with my mom and dad to help out. Uh, I am as well for a while. Uh, next one is collagen. You want collagen for especially for recovery from injuries or surgeries. Collagen is uh, essential to uh, restructuring the uh, skin, connective tissue, muscle, and collagen goes in the bone. So collagen, extremely important. And then we have uh, a nice organic protein uh, flavor. You either get the neutral or Vanilla, unless you like uh, to make chocolate drinks. Uh, sometimes I have both available just in case we want to do chocolate. 
Now on the, uh, the critical aminos, <clears throat> the vitamin shop brand has different flavors of it. Right now I'm using grape, but grape tastes too much like bubble gum, so we're not getting grape again. But they have a berry. The grapefruit works out really well for citrus. It'd be nice if they had a lemon flavor, mm -hmm. but uh, not yet. So anyway, basically getting all the powders into the drink first, along with those uh, capsules, or not the capsules, but the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the oil soluble, uh, not tablets, not really capsules, but uh, not sure what, what I would call them versus anything else. So anyway, um, that was just uh, for eye health, this vision goal. So now we're going into the fruits that go into the drink. So you can vary the flavors depending on what fruits you like the best, but uh, oftentimes doing bananas and uh, also uh, oranges oftentimes. Uh, occasionally pineapple, papaya, so don't be afraid to use different fruits. going to show you how to peel <clears throat> a um, uh, let's see what am I trying to think of the, uh, let's see I'll think of it in a second now, let's see got to get a good sharp knife here and a lot of times I put in uh, at least some measure of seeds along with uh, whatever the fruit is. So on uh, papaya, the seeds are extremely strong, so I don't put many of them in because <clears throat> I'm not sure of the impact of the strength of that chemistry in those seeds. But when you stop and think about it, everything for life is in the seeds to reproduce life. So I'm uh, very big on using the seeds in everything. So, and also uh, with citrus, the rinds and the white part are the most healthful part of the fruit. So definitely putting rinds and the whites of the, 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 uh, that layer between the outer skin and the fruit itself go into the drink. So we get everything. Basically not wasting any part of the uh, things that go into the drink. So on this, <clears throat> We are going to take the skin off the uh, papaya, just insert a knife between the skin and the flesh of the fruit and go around. I use uh, one plastic cutting board on top of another just to make it easy to turn the fruit so you get the skin all the way off. A little bit of that skin won't hurt anything. It's just, you know, I wonder about the, how careful uh, people are about getting the uh, chemistry off the uh, outside of these different things when they wash them up and send them to market. So the amount of washing that is technically required to market fruits and vegetables is pretty extensive, but still uh, you want to exercise a little bit of caution and uh, washing definitely will help a certain amount of things get adsorbed the difference between ad adsorb and absorption one is ad and one is ab 
adsorb means that it just goes on the surface and absorb means that your body takes it all the way in. So with the uh, pesticides, other chemicals, fertilizers and whatnot, uh, you're looking at, uh, for the skins anyway, adsorption into the skin. So just uh, a washing helps to make sure that uh, you give it that last uh, personal touch to trying to make sure you're not taking in any chemicals that you don't want to. So we'll get another slice of the papaya here. This papaya is uh, like at the peak. You can see it's got a, a deeper orange reddish color right around the, the seed area in the center. And uh, that's like at the peak right now. So anyway, when you uh, get the fruit, you don't want it to be soft. You want it to be a little firm to the touch, but it's something you just have to get used to by going and uh, buying these different things and testing to see uh, what it is about the, uh, the fruit when you hold it whether or not it feels like it's at the right stage of ripeness or not. So anyway, we'll get some more papaya seeds out here. And okay, what I was th thinking is uh, before the fruit called the uh, pomegranate. Pomegranate is particularly strong as an antioxidant, but when you watch the uh, the different food channels, the way they tell you to handle a pomegranate, it, it makes it convenient, but it's totally impractical when it comes to harvesting the, uh, the pomegranate seeds inside, which is what people go for for the, uh, the juice. So you get a few of those seeds in there. If you ever eat a, a papaya seed, y'all, We'll see uh, how strong those little things are. But again, that's like, that's where all life comes from, it, it, or to reproduce life for plants is the seed, or stretching out growing vines or something, you know, like clover. Clover is one of the toughest ones in your yard because it spreads out as a vine and then also you know, will drop seeds all over the place. So uh, extremely tough and, and those little, those little things up, they drop a tap root from the main plant that goes down sometimes like eight to 10 inches in the ground. So anyway, that's our papaya. I'm gonna show you how to, I uh, don't know. No. Now we're gonna go with uh, the, uh, the, the orange lemon lime and uh, typically uh, fresh ginger, but I don't have any fresh ginger right now. forgot the aloe, they go on aloe. So uh, there's our pomegranate. Uh, I'll show you the surefire way to have a total harvest on pomegranate. And for the uh, lemons and limes, slice you you want a good sharp knife this knife was pretty sharpened but I'll show you my technique on sharpening knives after uh, being a sous chef and a prep chef in a restaurant I definitely had uh, some opinions about the most efficient way to sharpen a knife a lot of chefs like the hand hold each uh, 
side, the knife, and then the sharpener, the rat tail sharpeners. Okay, so we got fairly thin sliced lemon, so the rind, the white, the seed, all going in. All that life giving nourishment going in, not wasting anything. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're going to get some lime. We'll get the thin slice on the lime. Even for a high powered unit like a Vitamix, or the, the rinds can be pretty tough to get down to mm -hmm. something that, that you actually don't find little chunks in there and have to chew on the chunks. Mm -hmm. So there we go with the lime. Get that back up here. Okay, so. Nice thin slices on the lime. Okay, that goes in. Now, aloe. We don't want to forget aloe because aloe is one of your greatest healing, healing plants. Okay, so now, <clears throat> nice aloe plant. Good size, good color. You want good color, all those nice carotenoids. But those carotenoids, because aloe has, uh, has a uh, chemistry where the skin itself uh, can cause gastric distress. So they always tell you to soak your aloe, but you can peel the skin very easily and uh, you still get a fair amount of the benefit of that chemistry that's generated in the skin because it's close to the flesh of the plant and you're getting right down to it. So I take about, well, on the fat end of the aloe or what's close to the core of the plant, about uh, like in, a little over an inch, maybe something like that. Mm -hmm. Really depends on what you want to do. So. There goes our aloe. Now what you're going to do to prepare the aloe is you want to cut this little ridge off. Let's see, show you the ridge. This ridge right here. Okay, try to get my orientation right so you can see what's happening. So we'll cut those spikes off. You don't have to waste a lot of the plant. One of the main things here with what I do is as little waste as possible. It took a lot to grow that sucker. We want to get everything out of it we can. So we're going to get that peeled back. And then what we're going to do is insert the knife blade. Let's see, get this so you can see it right at where the skin attaches to the flesh. And we're gonna get a little bit started there. And then we're gonna go onto the board and keep the round part always at the board and slicing along. And that'll give us our flesh of the aloe perfectly, preserving as much of the flesh as we can. Now the other thing is, with the uh, skin that's left behind, you're going to use that and rub it on your skin. And uh, if you have any uh, cuts or bruises or anything like that, you're going to rub that right on top of those. So now, going back again to the other side, this is the easier side because you can basically just keep this flat. Let's see, you got to always be aware where the camera's being able to pick up this image. Okay, so we're going to get the knife edge right in there and keep that right along that edge of the flesh and the skin. So once you put that back down, it's just like filleting a fish. You keep that skin down there and uh, now you have a great piece of aloe to go into your drink. So. We're gonna slice that to make it a little bit easier for the blender or your Vitamixer, whatever you have. And uh, there we go. 
into our drink. And now we're going to show you how to, uh, let's see, we're going to show you how to do the pomegranate. This is a key one because pomegranate is so good for you. And what they do on like the Food Network or something like that, they show you to cut it in half and bang on it. Well, once you dissect a pomegranate and you see the complex structure inside of there, there's no way that banging on this thing is going to get out the, the lion's share of the good pomegranate that's inside here. So what we're going to do is peel this thing and I'll show you. It's so easy to get all of the pomegranate out. So we're going to cut off the top and bottom and try not to go so deep that you go into the pomegranate seeds themselves. So we're going to try and get, so you're like right at the edge of the pomegranate seed itself. And right there, we got a little bit deep, but that's okay. Uh, you don't want to have the juice going all over your hands, although it's good for your skin. No problem there if you do. So now we have some seed exposed there. And then we're going to get the other end. And if the pomegranate has soft spots in it, that means that it's going bad inside. This one had a soft spot. And you can see right here, you know, this brownness here, I mean, so that the seeds are getting ready to start deteriorating. And uh, we don't want that because not just, not that it's going bad, but because you don't want to have any wasted pomeranian inside there because it's so good for you. So we're going to get this peeled. Okay, so now we have both ends exposed. And what we're going to do is take the knife and just go in part way just like uh, 3 sixteenths, a little bit over an eighth of an inch into the, you wanna pierce the skin so that it's down to the seed, right? So now you can see that as we peel the skin back, now your seeds are exposed. So we're going into the drink with every seed. We're not gonna waste anything. And let's see, we had one drop down in the sink here. That's going in the drink, not down the drain. All right, now we're gonna take another section about that much, just like one eighth of the yellow, or whatever's comfortable for you to use and pry back. We're gonna go in like the eighth inch, three sixteenths again, and we're gonna start peeling back. And this will help keep from mashing up the uh, pomegranate and losing the juice all over your hands and the countertop and everything else. So I'm gonna go in and peel this back. Now you see how those seeds are coming off there? That's perfect. If you tried to, to uh, cut this in half and bang on this pomegranate, those seeds would never come out. Only the ones at the very edge of the cut are really gonna come out. So, And then to get the seed off, what we're gonna do is just Pry them back a little bit, very gently, so we don't bust them all up. And that gives us total harvest on the goodness of that pomegranate. So you might be out of here, mom in the background going, mm-hmm. And that definitely is something to mm-hmm about, because that is good. So, get those seeds in there. Now on these uh, white parts like this, I cut into them even a little bit more mm -hmm. and peel them back and save all the seeds. So now, we're gonna take off any of the seeds that are exposed and might just fall off anyway as we're handling the pomegranate. So we're gonna come back another eighth inch to three sixteenths of an inch, keep the knife blade in there and fry back and just peel back. Just gently 
trying to preserve all the fruit. So now we're gonna take those seeds that came off against the skin and we're just gonna see if I can just keep exposing them in a way so that they're sort of hanging there and you can get your finger on the edge of them and just pry them enough so that they fall off and go into the drink. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got that. Now, uh, let's see, oh, there's my knife. Okay, so now we're gonna come back and do this again. And you can pretty much see where the different cells are that you have this sort of like a connective tissue in here in between the seed pod areas. Mm -hmm. And you can even take the tip of your uh, knife and cut mm -hmm. out parts of that so it makes it a little bit easier to pry out. See, now we got a couple of pomegranate seeds there. We're, we're gonna save them, we're gonna waste them. They're going in the drink. Mm -hmm. A little bit of the white doesn't hurt anything. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a lot of nutrition in that white part. All right, so now we just pried out a chunk here that was on one of those big white areas that divide up the cells in the pomegranate. So now we're gonna get that, get that in the drink. All right, so see we have these different cell areas and and they're not like straight up and down, really uniform, that it comes around and wraps around. There's no way banging on this thing is gonna get all that fruit out of there. And that's what you're going for is the fruit. Why, why buy this stuff? It's expensive. Pomegranate's not a cheap fruit to buy. And um, why waste it? Don't wanna waste it. Took too much resource to make it. So we're not gonna waste it. So you just use your fingertip and gently um, pry these little fruit pellets out of there. It's really seeds, but anyway, just keep prying back to expose enough of the fruit to be able to pry it gently with your fingertips and uh, not lose a lot of the juice. See how much we're really uh, not losing much at all of the juice to the skin. So it takes time, but you just made an investment in a fruit that you feel is extremely healthful for you. So you don't want to waste it. All right. So now we got a big chunk here that came out. Get the seeds. So it's, it's just mostly a matter of prying back, exposing the little seeds in there so that you can get a fingertip on them and get them out of there without crushing them. So. And the pomegranate will definitely give the drink a great flavor that uh, mom will appreciate. So we got that. We have a couple little pellets that went down in the sink. I was trying to get a stand for the camera, but um, we didn't have enough time to go out and do that. But anyway, here comes, here comes another segment. I usually hold the pomegranate over the drink itself so that when some of these seeds come loose and fall, they fall right into the drink. So I come back here, just peel back, expose those seeds. Now the other thing about the health drink, it takes commitment. This is a, a process that, that takes time. Uh, you don't don't want to be in a rush to try and do it. 
but it takes a real commitment to to your health, especially if you're trying to help somebody recover from an injury, surgery, whatever it might be. Yeah, we'll find that one later. So we get these. So once you get the seeds exposed the right way, you can actually just even push on them. And that'll break them off and get them in your drink. So we have uh, a drink where you can use your favorite supplements or use the ones that um, that I show you in this. Like I say, we know this has helped uh, stop the progression of the Alzheimer's with my mom. So we know this is a good combination. So now, here we go. Uh, we had uh, a big cell. These things will break off in big cells. Now look at the pattern on that connective tissue in there. That is never going to release all that good fruit just by banging on the skin on the outside. So, but you know, these guys on the, the big uh, Food Network channels and whatnot, they aren't buying the stuff. It's all provided, so they don't have to worry about it. But for uh, John Q citizen out there in the field on their own, mm -hmm. uh, you want to get everything out of the dollars you spend. So let's see. Just pushing on them with my thumb a little bit, and they're falling right in. They're not bursting open. When I first started learning how to do this, I had pomegranate juice squirting everywhere. It, I mean, some sometimes it, that going little seeds would squirt up to like two feet. So anyway, um, and some of the areas are a little bit stubborn, but once you get a few seeds going, then it makes it easy to get the rest. So saving all that juice, all that fruit going into our drink gonna have a drink that's more flavorful and refreshing my mom's favorite things flavorful and refreshing we want to get as much flavor as we can because a lot of these supplements uh, aren't don't have the greatest taste so we want to make sure that the elements that do have good taste overpower the ones that don't and you'll see once those drink is done there's no way that you would believe there's probably between the two multivitamins and the other supplements there's probably about 40 different supplements in this drink and then you have the, the fresh fruit that goes in with it too so now you see the uh, cells in there more of the cell structure so we just uh, take these things at a point where the cell is and then just pry it and there's some seeds popping loose, so we'll get over there over top of the drink. Let those seeds fall in the drink. And we keep, uh, we keep prying off those seeds. You got to remember, it's hard for you to see with my hand in the way, but, you know, we just, once those seeds are exposed, like I said before, oh. <laughs> This last one to the floor. And all right, so now we just keep breaking them off here. I mean, look how easy that is for those seeds to come out. You know, why not just go the extra steps and, and make sure you can get all that great fruit out of there. After all, you paid for it. Don't want to just throw it down the drain, throw it in the garbage disposal. So... Here we go, getting down into the home stretch on this pomegranate. So here's a good, uh, see that membrane, 
how complex that is. And it is convoluted a little bit, so that there's no way you're gonna bang on this fruit and get it all. So, just uh, make sure we get this in there. We're getting close to the end because the, the banana is going to go fast. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, elements in there of the uh, citrus ranging from lemon, lime, and uh, we'll get some orange in there too. Tangerines have great flavor. They have <clears throat> different uh, varieties of orange now that are extremely easy to peel. So we'll go for some of them. Uh, tangerine has great flavor. So oftentimes use tangerine. If you can uh, get a source for really good orange, it's hard to beat the flavor on a regular orange. Okay. All right. Getting down to the end. <laughs> Getting a few seeds popping here and there to, because we're trying to show you guys how, how to get this done. Now there's a very thick area here that was at the bottom. It was either the bottom or the top. So we'll just cut some of that back. Get the tip of the knife in there so you can go deep without cutting across big areas of the um, fruit and then slicing into it and losing the juice. So you can see we're getting all that, that white uh, pulpy area out. Just a little movement with your finger and the fruit's popping out and it's not crushing it and squirting the juice everywhere. So, just pulling back, connect that uh, cell tissue and uh, get the fruit in the drink. Okay. Caught this one just in the nick of time because some of the seeds, uh, because as I mentioned, the soft spot shows that the fruit's starting to turn inside. Some of the fruit seed is uh, starting to get a twin of brown to it, which isn't going to hurt you, isn't really bad for you, but it's not in its peak flavor when that starts to happen. So, we'll get this going here, then we get move on to the banana and the orange. I, on the banana, uh, I'll show you, we're not wasting any fruit there either, because uh, once I peel the banana, then I come back with a butter knife and basically fillet the skin so that you get the last remaining part of the fruit that's up against the skin and that's that's where all the life action in the banana is happening you know once that skin starts forming fruit that's that's the main process right there so uh, getting that fruit right down on the skin takes you into that zone of the greatest amount of life activity going on in the production of the fruit so we're just about done here. Okay, so that's our pomegranate. See that? Barely lost any juice. And we got all that good nourishment going there. We pick up some of these seeds that kind of dodged the process. And we're going to go on with the bananas. Yeah. All right, so now with the um, with the aloe, we're going to use 
use this on some scabs that my mom has on her face and her head just from uh, picking out her skin when it gets itchy. So <clears throat> we can get that stuff healed up pretty good. Now we're cutting off the, the minimal amount of the tip in the top. So we want to preserve as much of the fruit as we can. So we're going to slice the skin. Let's see here. Show you that. Slice the skin. Make it easy to peel. Do all the slicing at one time because then... <clears throat> that helps to um, uh, keep all of the <clears throat> action of uh, getting the, the uh, sticky stuff from the fruit all over your fingers. You get it all done at one time and then uh, come back and slice up your fruit and then we're going to fillet the skin. So, <clears throat> okay, so here we go. I just, <clears throat> excuse me, break the banana into the drink. Okay, now we're going to get the a couple of ice fruit cube trays out so that the uh, ice can... Uh, uh, be warmed up enough along the surface of the tray that the ice cubes pop out without shattering and splintering and going all over the place. So we're going to put the uh, two trays out to let the ice separate from the trays. Okay, so now we got the um, banana skins here. Uh, just because there's so much curvature in the skin, uh, I just usually pull it into three sections and it keeps it relatively flat while you're putting the butter knife in to uh, fillet the remaining banana flesh away from the skin. Okay, so here we go. Now uh, let's see, butter knife. All right, so you're just gonna get the uh, the flesh started a little bit like that. You're going to lay it down flat on the board and just run your knife back. Try to keep it at an angle where you're not going to press all the way through the skin. So now you have your skin filleted and there's nothing left except the, what you don't want to have anyway with the brown out oxidized dots. All right, so same thing again, just get the knife in there, the tip of the knife, keep it relatively flat to the board, run it back, and now you got your filleted skin, looking good, saving all the fruit we can, no waste, or relatively no waste, as little waste as possible, let's put it that way. So now we got that. Drop that in. So we're just about ready to drop ice in and take it down to the water mixer and uh, mix this up and give mom her nice, flavorful, refreshing vitamin drink. Okay. See that fillet of the, that's your uh, fruit coming off the skin. <clears throat> Saving every bit of the good fruit that we can. All right, now we've got everything in the drink. This is a good drink with a lot of variety in it. 
this ice cube tray was uh, out before, so the, um, the ice cubes are relatively freed up. What happens is uh, when you have an ice cube tray out like this, and you don't use all the ice cubes, but uh, you have the ice cubes release from the tray, what happens, you can see inside there, the frost at the edge. What happens is that little bit of water that's still uh, adsorbed on the surface of the tray starts to crystallize and it pushes the ice cube that was in there away. So after you uh, have a tray out and the ice cubes release and you put it back in the freezer, uh, that will guarantee that those ice cubes will just pop out of there just by shaking your tray or putting it over and the ice cubes come out. That's what I just did. Normally you have to twist the trays and bang on it and go through other gyrations. But with that process, now when you put this back in the refrigerator or freezer, you want to let all that frost melt so that you don't have any ice crystals there. Because what will happen is if you fill that with water right away, and put that immediately back in the seat in the freezer. Now you have the new cube forming and it's welded to that frost lining in those little boxes. So that makes the ice cube stick. And now you got a problem on your hands getting the darn cubes out. So what you want to do is uh, let this sit and melt and then put the water in and then put it back in the freezer. So now uh, we got a few more See that, how easy that was to let that tray out and let the, let the frost melt off the bottom and then the cubes start releasing and all you have to do is shake your tray like that or tap it over or dig a fingernail in along the edge of a cube and your cubes pop right out nice and clean. And I mean, if you want crushed ice, uh, you can let them stick in there and shatter them. But that usually becomes more of a mess and a pain than you want to deal with. So anyway, there we go. And we'll put that one back in the freezer to come out on the next go around of making our vitamin uh, drink. So. Okay, so now we're going down to the Vitamixer. This is so loud, it hurts my mom's ears when I turn it on. So here we are, the Vitamixer down in the laundry room. Let's see here. Yeah, I guess you can see there. We're in the laundry room. Get the Vitamixer going. I start, start on low speed. So everything down. And I mean, technically you're supposed to have a cover over top and we have the covers, but if you do this the right way, uh, you aren't gonna have a big problem. So I start on the lowest speed and let it start to grind. So the high speed is off and we're on normal speed, our variable speed. Here's our variable speed dial. Let's see if we can. Okay, yeah, there we go. The variable speed dial high and normal speed. So that's down in normal speed or variable speed, variable speed dial, and the on and off here. So we're all the way down on everything. We're gonna turn it on and let it start the mix. Now, as it goes, we're gonna turn up the speed so that it doesn't like whip into this stuff and send it flying everywhere. So just gradually crank up the speed.
so it definitely is better from a splash standpoint to put the lid over top but um, just being a little bit lazy here on rounding up the lid and uh, that's it the drink is done so um, we'll go back and We'll go back. Yeah, you definitely don't want the splatter shooting out and hitting walls and going over all the washing machine and dryer. But, um, okay, so we'll pour, pour mom's special drink here. We call it mom's special drink. And uh, we'll pour some for dad. It's not really good to let this stuff sit overnight. You want to use it up all in one day. And let's see, get a little bigger glass for my dad. Okay. Okay, now because this is gonna last, this is gonna last all day. Uh, once I pour the drinks, then I use a little bit of uh, purified water just to rinse down the side. Let's see here. So that's a valuable drink there. You don't want to let it dry in on the sides of the... No, let's see here. Where am I? <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. Just to get it down off the sides. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. All right. Just sort of rinsing down the side real quick. And a little bit of extra water in there won't hurt anything. So now let's go up and take a look at the selection on the vitamins here. Okay. Multivitamins. Let's see. Uh, there we go. So that's, uh, that's one multivitamin and then, uh, same company, a little different variation. I do different multivitamins because each, seems like each one has a different array of herbal component and, uh, that allows me to get the, the array of herbal component that I want in these drinks, uh, res resveratrol here that's another supplement that we're using uh just started uh was using extract on the stinging nettle but um we have a uh, stinging nettle in a capsule now and let's see here we have the potassium to help with uh muscle contraction keep from having uh, muscle spasms here's our calcium you always want to get it in combination with magnesium and uh, vitamin d and zinc zinc to go along with the i elements that we're using that gotta have zinc in combination with zeaxanthin for the zeaxanthin to really work the way it's supposed to uh, ubiquinol, there's our zeaxanthin, using that one, chromium, picolinate, so, I don't know, I have this uh, on the flip, 
the uh, video recording on the flip. So I don't know if all these things are coming out backwards or not on these labels. So I'm going to switch back, I think. <laughs> and maybe not be able to do that while it's recording. <laughs> so anyway, then we'll go on with the uh, lutein. You know, lutein there. You can also see the strength of the dosage part capsule on that and that's actually um let's see uh bee pollen i think bee pollen is really important because uh, the bees are going to the flowers the flowers are strong in carotenoids especially if it's marigolds the marigolds are where, where they get the the most uh zeaxanthin and astaxanthin and those are your strongest eye components. So uh, beta cytosterol for the bladder to help give you better bladder control. And then I'm using just a little tiny bit of peppermint extract. This is really strong. I, I was testing how much to use on this and uh, I was starting to get uh, a feeling of nausea all day and it was having too much peppermint extract. So <laughs> I cut back to like half a drop a day. So it's, it's like good. And then uh, this is the nettle in the extract form. So I'm a little torn on whether to use the extract form or, or capsules on these things. Myrrh, myrrh from the Bible. What did they bring to... Uh, uh, Jesus when he was born, you know, so uh, very uh, strong healing element there with the myrrh. Uh, let's see. Okay, and then uh, DHEA, the mood factor element, good for your psyche. Okay, going back to eye elements, eye bright, definitely got to have eye bright. And then we have uh, vitamin A. Got to have plenty of vitamin A. And then bilberry, essential for night vision, better vision in low light. So bilberry. And then uh, turmeric, very popular now to help in inflammation. You know, it's funny. I I don't I di don't think I finished the what I was. Uh, recounting about my experience in vitamin shots from yesteryear and <laughs> today. But um, even when there wasn't so much selection, here's some bi biotin, the bee comp, be extremely essential for uh, regeneration of nerve tissue, especially after injuries and sur surgeries, where uh, definitely in surgery, they have to cut through nerves to get to whatever they're trying to do. So you want to be strong in the B vitamins to help regenerate the nerves. And I mean, that, that can be a little more painful because your nerves are regenerating, but you definitely want those uh, nerve uh, synapses, the nerve tissue, the, uh, everything about the nerve you want to regenerate so that you have normal or completely normal function as much as possible after a surgery. And then selenium to help uh, prevent against cancer, but uh, uh, then also, uh, let's go back and finish, well, I also have vitamin B6, which uh, I use uh, to help kill pain in combination with the uh, B complex, using a B50 formula too on that B complex, I think the B100s are a little bit strong, or at least I found them to be strong for my system. So uh, after testing the B100s against the B50s, I've gone back to the B50s. So I just feel a little bit better using the lower dose on the B vitamin. And then uh, olive leaf extract, very essential on recovery from healing and maintaining good cell health. Grapeseed extract, uh, definitely good for uh, vision and in general antioxidant. C complex, I always go for the complexes because, uh, you know, in nature and what God gave us, 
everything was in combination. You have cofactors and, and enzymes and all these things working together. So uh, to me, if you extract just a pure form of anything, then you're stripping away all the things that, that God created to work in conjunction with those things. So to me, it doesn't make any sense to uh, strip away all those things. Here's the B50 complex. So I do about four uh, grams of vitamin C at least a day. And let's see here, we have uh, ginkgo biloba, glucosamine and chondroitin. Now, uh, I have occasionally pain in my hand, especially finger joints. And whenever that starts to happen, I uptake the intake of glucosamine chondroitin and the MSM, which is uh, helps to uh, uh, get the absorption of the uh, glucosamine and chondroitin. And uh, the pain goes away. So uh, I know from experience, and again, that's anecdotal evidence, just my own personal experience, the dang stuff works. So, and then there's your uh, B6 and uh, doing ec extra echinacea, very big on the herbs. They say don't continuously take echin echinacea or, uh, uh, let's see, what's the other one I'm trying to think of, the astragalus. But I find that uh, that admonition uh, hasn't held up in my own experience, so I take it all the time. Um, extra minerals, minerals is extremely essential especially in regeneration after surgeries and injuries. And then uh, Boswellia, which is uh, frankincense. So what, again, what did they bring Jesus when he was born? Uh, frankincense was one of the key things because it's so valuable as an herb. So uh, frankincense and then uh, and for the oil-soluble things, the vitamin E, extra E, and then extra lecithin. Now, you know, when they examine the brain and the body in general, the greatest concentration of lecithin is in the brain. So you want to make sure your brain is uh, getting plenty of lecithin. And on all these things, except for the oil solubles, and even with them, eventually over time, as cells are destroyed and, and uh, new cells replace them, the, the uh, what they call lipids, which make up the oils. Those are the, the fat molecules that, like the, uh, you know, you have amino, amino acids make up proteins. Well, for fats, the lipids make up the fat or the oil that we generally think of. So uh, lipids make up are a, an essential element of cell membranes. So if you don't have enough lipids, you're not going to get the proper cell growth, regeneration, and new cell development. So again, here is uh, aminos. Uh, my dad gives me extra stuff on some of these things. So, uh, he takes his supplements and I take mine and uh, we sort of trade back and forth on some things that we find or in particular we can identify that, that is working as uh, you would expect. So and then I have a couple other, like, I also use this multivitamin. So I take a full complement of the other two vitamins that I first showed you, the, uh, the Nature's Plus, both these, uh, let's see if I can get them on the, both on the camera. Oh yeah, there we go. Both on the camera. And, okay. It's hard doing this stuff in reverse. Okay, so I have them and then the uh, rainbow. So I, I also take an extra multi one or two tablets of that along with the other one. So I spread it out during the day so it isn't all at the same time. So anyway, but for mom's drink, I get it all in there in the morning, except for the extra multivitamin. And then uh, I take the uh, 
the B vitamins, that's your uh, biotin, the uh, B6, the some vitamin C to go with it, the uh, B complex, and the uh, and the PABA. Now, one thing that people don't realize is that para amino benzoic acid, what people call PABA or PABA, is very effective in uh, preventing sunburn. So it's a, a natural element that you can take internally and it helps protect you from exposure to the sun. And uh, I know that it works for a fact because uh, when I don't have my PABA, my PABA, and I'm outside helping children learn how to build boats and the foundation that, as you know, I help to administrate if I'm out in the sun for 12 hours straight, especially like down in Florida or down in the Keys, and you get that direct exposure all day long, and you're not getting totally blistered with like third degree burns and blistering all over the place. Well, at least second degree, you get blistering. Anyway, that happens when I don't have the PABA, the paramino benzoic acid, or what's called PABA. So when I take it, though, I can stay out in the sun all day, so... Uh, anyway, uh, just sort of fun facts to know and, uh, take into consideration. And, uh, then when you get time, you can go and take a look at these things and figure out what you want to do for yourself. But anyway, that's the, uh, that's what I do for the drink. You can mix up the fruits. You can concentrate on one fruit to get a different flavor profile going. See, and then, uh. Mom's already started uh, doing her drink here. Let's see, yep, there it is. Already drinking there. There's mom. <clears throat> Mom's doing fine, right mom? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that's it. Uh, that's the uh, health drink or uh, vitamin drink. Plenty of flavor, very refreshing, so good for you. Uh, and as I mentioned, it uh, helped uh, stay the, the uh, dementia that my mom was starting to get. And, uh, you know, it hasn't reversed it per se uh, that I can tell, but at least it isn't progressing. So that's it. That's the health drink. And uh, also, uh, one of the things that I've been trying to use lately is uh, cranberries. So I've uh, been using a lot more... Uh, cranberry in these drinks too just for like bladder control and that sort of thing so the cranberries there but anyway have a great day and uh, have fun making your drinks and uh, let me know uh, any uh, results that you get that you feel are you know a positive identification of health benefit see you later Colette see you bye